The potential which tempted Jim McLean to pay £60,000 to Clyde Bank for his transfer in October. And Rapid Vienna playing exactly the same team which won 2-1 in the first leg. Nine internationals in all. One of them is their goalkeeper Herbert Feurer, who will be looked upon to play as crucial a role as Hamish McAlpine did for United two weeks ago. Huge crowd inside Tanadice as Rapid Vienna start the match, defending their 2-1 first leg lead. Paul Sturrock tackled immediately, and Derek Stark winning number two, moving straight into midfield. Here's Bannon on the left. A German tackle from Leo Liner, the Rapid right back. Now back with David Neri. Conditions tonight, ideal for football. Crisp, clear evening. And the United supporters an excellent voice. Richard Goff, who started the match on Saturday in Aberdeen in the centre-back position, now playing right back again. Paul Sturrock forcing that very determined clearance over on the far side to give United the throw. Paul Haggerty back in his usual position after missing the cup tie for Tawdry on Saturday. Making that towards Dodds. And Neary. Hegarty switching it to the left to Malpass. Crankle getting back with him. Here to elbow with the, the fullback off the ball. So the free kick is given to Dundee United. Hans Crankle in the unfamiliar role defending for Rapid. 66 caps he has for Austria. Free kick left by Coin, but no one coming in from the far side, and that's a rapid goal kick. It's on immediately by Malpass, and with David taking the goal kicks, he plays the United men on side. Nearly at full stretch. Keglovitz beaten by Goff. Goff going for the turn from Bannon, but Keglovitz was alive to that. Take it back very smartly indeed. Osterak. Once again, Hegarty races into the box for the long throw on the far side. We're taken by Derek Stark. Looking for Hegarty, got the touch. David Odds challenging, Feurer in trouble. And the whistle have gone in any event. It's a free kick inside the box to Rapid Vienna. The challenge, I think, from David Dodds was the one which incurred the penalty. Keglovitz. Turning away from Malpass. Bannon getting back again, so is David Dodds. Good play from United, pulling men back whenever they lost possession. Taking no chances of losing an away goal if it's avoidable. Richard Goff. Running straight into the tackle. The ball is retrieved for United by Sturrock. Here's Dodds. Goff playing it to the wing to Billy Kirkwood. Taking on Craig is bar, and that's a free kick, all right. Just on the edge of the penalty box. And Kirkwood certainly had beaten his man comprehensively as he went forward. Clear free kick. So Bannon again to take the set piece. Goff and Hegarty in the box. Fine effort by Richard Goff. Splendidly saved by Feurer. Well, Richard Goff could still, scarcely have taken this one better. Direct from the free kick on the full volley from Bannon. But Feurer in the right position. Start with the long throw again. 
Helped on by Hegarty. Goff also in the box. And Eamon Bannon getting back very quickly. The back four men in the box needing some help from midfield players. And playing it for Goff and that little moment of hesitation on the part of Richard Goff. Allowing the ball to run for the throw, but it was deflected. This coin. Chance now for Stark. And David Dodds makes it for United. 21 minutes gone, and Dodds gets the vital goal. But David Dodds takes the acclaim of his colleagues and the United supporters. And that really was a bit unfortunate, that goal, the way it came about. Coming from the far side, they cross in from Richard Goff. Now Stark coming on here, appeared to be caught in two winds with the shot. I'm sure he wasn't intending a pass, but Dodds didn't hang about, and Foyer had no chance at all. Hits, chanced strongly by Goff. Good ball wide for Bruchik. He was the man who has had the very bad knee injury a moment ago. Oh, that wasn't far away. Panenka almost surprising Hamish Bacal point at the near post. And that shows the danger from this man, Panenka. Well, there appeared to be no chance at all on as the ball was played out of the danger area from Morris Malpass. There was Panenka, spotted the chance, and look how close that was. Neri playing it wide. Goff again. Relishing these forward runs on the right. This Kirkwood. Starrick leaves it. Dodds couldn't make it. Some good defending there inside the box. The marking was from Leo Lyon. Liner rather, and he certainly saved the rapid Baker on that occasion. Very swift move on the right. Billy Kirkwood racing towards the red ball line. You see Starrick letting the ball run for Dodds, and the challenge from Liner was decisive. Good running again by Bruchik. Neri with him. And David Dodds. May well be a shade lucky there to get away with that challenge. Leaning heavy on Crunchar, heavily in Crunchar, but the referee again not interested. And to be fair to the Aussies, not much of a protest. Here's Bruchik again. Liner on the overlap. He's away from Bannon. That's well collected by McAlpine. Well, how the Austrians must hate the sight of the United goalkeeper. An inspired performance of the NL four night ago. And just watch this again as Liner comes through this tackle from Bannon. Makes towards the red ball line. Very promising situation for the Austrians. And there was McAlpine. Stark getting the ball wide again for Billy Kirkwood. And that's the corner kick. Happily accepted by Kirkwood. Playing in that right flank role, normally occupied by Ralph Milne. So Bannon lining up the in-swinger, Coyne on the line. They're getting beaten to it by Weber. So Richard Goff and Paul Hegarty have another opportunity from... The second corner kick. Hans Krenkel back in the box to help his defence as Bannon swings it across. Poirier's punch out. Kirkwood back towards Bannon. Coyne! He snatched it. Tommy Coyne certainly had the opportunity on that cross. Although you must give credit too to Herbert Weber. I'm sure we'll see that on the replay. Punch out from Feurer, a good header of this. And Kirkwood back into the path of Bannon. Now as the ball comes across, it falls kindly for Tommy Coyne. Now look how quickly Weber comes to block the shot. Craig is Bauer making the run from the back, the number four. Keglovitz in space. United a bit stretched. All the way across now for Krankel to return. And Bruchik had a shooting chance from Goff's header. 
Jaglovitz. Very important, you know, you can get the interval with this single goal lead. The 45 minutes are up in the first half and still Rapid come forward. So the burst to life in the closing quarter of this first half. Won the corner kick now. Barely enough time to take it in the first half. Played in by Paninka. An awkward one. Dodd's doing well, taking no chances with the headed clearance. And once again, United have every man back in the box. Paninka once again. And Dodd's again content to turn it behind as referee votes, checks his watch. And how United will welcome the sound of the halftime whistle. Panenka for the third time. And then away by Goff. And the half-time whistle goes. United depart to warm applause from their supporters for a thoroughly efficient, confident first-half performance. The golden moment, of course, coming in the 21st minute when David Dodds gave them that golden goal. The cross from Richard Goff on the right came to Derek Stark. Stark tried the shot, which didn't come off. It broke for Dodds and the ball was shot into the roof of the net. So David Oz departs, United have that solitary goal lead, and they're looking good now for the European Cup semi-finals, depending, of course, on the 45 minutes to come when you rejoin us right after the break. United get the second half underway, and... Rapid Vienna have made a change at the interval. Number 12 has come on, that's Gerald Vilfurth, who's come on in place of Zlatko Kranchar, who played in the first half, winning number seven. So it's Vilfurth for Kranchar, and that was a change which was made, well, Vilfurth came on rather than the first leg in Vienna, and was impressive on that occasion. So obviously the Austrians hoping to do the same again. And the United at halftime must have been content, but they all also would have a difficult tactical problem now that they have the match in hand they have to decide whether to keep pressing forward for more goals to clinch the tie or whether they should try to tie things up and hold what they have well we'll soon see what Jim McLean has in mind I've no doubt he's mindful of the fact that Rapid have scored in both their away legs in the European Cup already this season on one occasion against Bohemians their away goal took them through to this round they lost 3-1 to Nolte away from home and they lost 2-1 to Bohemians and on both occasions have done enough at home to make it through so one goal for Rapid would clearly change the complexion of the whole match so United with the free kick David Neri will take it Chikov heading it across and Feurer collects that certainly has encouraged the United supporters. Gar got in in front of Paul Sturrock. Sturrock again. Bring it back for Stark. Well, that wasn't far away again. Derek Stark certainly getting a sense for goal. Played across by Sturrock. Stark hitting it firmly and positively towards the right-hand post. And Feurer happy to see it go wide. Levitt's got the touch, but Neri was there. Bannon content to accept the throw. That's first Tarak. Once again, Gargan heavily at the back. Stark taking more punishment. And referee Robert Butts is determined not to use his Yellow card, another quiet word with Gargar. He did that in the first half, mind you, and really a second warning should involve a booking. Here's Bannon's free kick. Richard Goff is up, beaten by Keenast. Stark playing it back. Good header down by Keenast. And here's Crankle. Pilfer. The flag is up against Keglovitz in the middle. 
And once again, the Austrian coach is on the touchline, protesting. Otto Baric going wild at that offside decision. Richard Goff with the free kick. David Hodds going for it. Bannon challenging. And that retaliatory kick will undoubtedly put Ruchik in trouble. Well, Bannon is booked. Well, I have the feeling that it was the reaction of the Austrian player which got Bannon booked, rather than the foul itself. And now there'll be a change for Dundee United. Tommy Coyne is going off and John Holt goes on. Sorry, Ralph Milne it is. Ralph Milne, number 14, going on in place of Tommy Coyne. David Odds penalised for that late challenge. Certainly was careless and well worthy of the warning from referee Robert Butts. Leo Leinart is on the deck. And I think that may be to allow some reorganisation among the rapid players. A bit of coaching going on as the rapid coach comes onto the field, arguing once again with the referee. Otto Baric getting upset once again. And taking some stick from the United fans on the far side. Greg is bar playing it forward. Keglovitz has got great pace, but he won't catch that. Kept in by Sturrock. Just Kinast, Ruchik, Panenka, there's Krankel, leaving it to Keglovitz. Great shot saved by McAlpine, and the menace of Keglovitz couldn't be clearer. What a shot that was from the blonde striker. Set up by Krankel, Keglovitz came inside, let fly with that powerful right foot shot, and that was well saved by McAlpine. Leaving it to Ruchik. Panenka playing it forward as Keglovitz. Well judged by Hegarty as Krankel. Oh, well worth the first time effort. Goff putting out of trouble. Goff's the him. Panenka couldn't keep the ball in play and that's a United throw. It really is all very tense now. Second change being made by Rapid. Hagmeyer coming on. Panenka has gone off. Appears to have taken a knock. So Hagmeyer, the man who scored in Vienna two weeks ago when he came on as substitute, gets the opportunity once again. Well start, can he enough pace? Away from Liner. Needs some support. Oli Kirkwood's header down towards Dodds. So well on the far side, played it back to Oscar Kuda, now one header. Dodds taking it first time in the dipping volley, almost sneaking into the top corner. Bit of pushing by Kienast on Stark, although Willem got to the ball. The guard got it was rather, number three. So United's free kick. Once again, the men in the back going up, Goff and Hegate. How United would welcome a second goal to take some of the strain off. But in the short one this time towards Sturrock. This is Milne. Swerving in fire and almost catching out the Austin keeper. Well, what a shot that was from Ralph Milne. Stepping inside, the left foot shot, swerving and dipping, and Feurer did very well indeed. Garga hasn't been seen to attack the under-21 international.
Here's Weber. Hagmeyer. Back to Bruchik. Hagmeyer again. Keglovitz is free in the right. David Dodds battling hard. There's Bruchik. Keglovitz still free over on the right. Malpas coming to meet him. Can United hang on? Seconds ticking away much too slowly for the liking of the Tanadai supporters. Rappi trying to create the opportunity. Dodds at full stretch. Now Prague is bar. The far post cross. And the header goes wide to the relief of Hamish McAlpine, although he did appear to have the ball covered. Good cross this from Prague's bar, finding Hike Meyer in the box. Good header, just going wide. There's David Odds, now Milne. Holt judging it well. Milne towards Starak. Neat touch to Dodds. Can he get it to Bannon? Start can. Now some magic from Bannon wouldn't go wrong at this point. Here's David Dodds. Forcing his way forward. Davis turns. Good play from Vilfort. The referee allowing play to go on. Keglovitz is free in the right. Tremendous pace he has. And look at the positioning of Hamish McAlpine. That, that, that goalkeeping. made the run, came through the middle like an arrow. And McAlpine rescuing Thunder United. Well, what a save that was for McAlpine. He made it look easy, but it certainly wasn't. And United now have a free kick as we go into the final minute of the match. History about to be made for Dundee United. Golf playing it forward. Offside flag was up against Paul Sturrock. So a free kick now to Rapid. But inside the well inside the final minute. 30 seconds left. I can't remember the trainers on in the second half, so there should be very little time added on. It can only be for deliberate time wasting. Malpass into space. Sturrock chasing. What stamina is shown tonight? Gargars pass back. Referee checking his watch as Weber comes forward for Rapid. Bad ball forward collected now by Holt. This is Sturrock. This is Derek Stark. Checking on the ball now, looking for help inside and trying to surprise Feuerer at the near post. The referee checking his watch carefully. The final whistle has gone. minute performance, Jim McLean still hasn't raised a smile but he certainly ought to, Davy Dodds get the vital goal in the 21st minute, turning in the miscued shot from Derek Stark and the United supporters applauding their heroes to a man well it wasn't a victory gain in Cavalier style it wasn't that kind of night but United showed their resilience, their organisation their tactical awareness their determination and that's what's taken them through for the semi-final of the European Cup for the first time in their history. Yes, an absolutely superbly disciplined performance there by Dundee United. Congratulations to Jim McLean and his players. After the match, Graham Stewart spoke to the delighted Dundee United manager. You said before the match this was the most important match ever for Dundee United. I think you would say that the players and fans responded to that. Well, obviously we're all very pleased with the result, but uh, as usual I felt that the performance could have been a little bit better in the aspect of uh, when we had the ball. But uh, it was a magnificent night for uh, everyone connected with Dundee United, and I think that uh, uh, very few people in Scotland anyway would grudge us this night because the players have put an awful lot into the game in the past few years, and I think they've entertained an awful lot of people in Scotland. You stressed that this uh, Austrian team were the most ordinary side that, that uh, you've met in, in Europe. 
and uh, did that influence your thinking at all as you went into the game? No, I didn't uh, say that remark actually. What happened was that they said that we were the most ordinary side and uh, that they had met and uh, they also made a comment that uh, we were the poorest side that we'd met. But uh, on Monday, Mrs Lindsay wrote out a couple of uh, these statements and put them on the board and last thing on the part with they told the boys to have a look at them and go out and ram it down the, the coach's throat. And uh, I don't really think we did uh, that as far as an exceptional performance. But the main thing is we're through to the semi-final and that is the important aspect. You got that, that one goal and uh, as you came out to, into the second half, did you feel that that one goal would be enough? No, at no time. That I was actually thinking about a one-goal victory uh, during the day and I said to myself, I says, well, I hope it comes in the last minute because I, I really dreaded hanging on for uh, uh, 45 minutes or even for uh, 89 minutes if it had come in the first minute. And uh, I knew what I'd go through at that time. But obviously, at the end of the day, now the game's over and the main thing is we got the goal that mattered. Of course, with that one goal lead, you made a, a fairly progressive decision in that you uh, you put Ralph Milne on rather than sort of tightening up in the in the midfield. So you were keen to go forward and get more goals. Well, I think that uh, I did the right thing as far as uh, trying to keep the players trying to be positive. But uh, again, I honestly think that I made the wrong decision. I thought John Holt should have went on at that time, and Eamon Bannon would have been better pushing slightly forward and it would have uh, closed up the midfield but uh, at no time really did they look like scoring because Ralph Milne really worked back into the midfield and did a tremendous job coming back the way but I felt that Ralph at the moment is uh, well off the form that he's capable of and his confidence is down a wee bit but I hope this result uh, will help him and uh, we definitely need him playing because we have a lot to play for between now and the end of the season. Just a suggestion of a smile there from Jim McLean, and he's right, nobody in Scotland grudges Dundee United a famous victory. Next to Graham Stewart. What's your bite Well, I think um, actually Graham Richard Cross and uh, Stabby come in to have a hit again, but I think he's clapped and fortunately it fell right to my left peg, and I didn't usually score much of them, so just luckily that went in. It's probably the most important one left foot anyway, I love score. As well as scoring a goal, you were doing an amazing pair of work back in, in midfield. You, were, you seemed to be all over the place. That was your job tonight. Uh, well, especially after we scored a goal, we seemed to lay back a bit. Near midfield, we uh, seemed to control the game, so I had to go back and uh, try to give them a help. But I don't think we played that well over the two legs, but that makes up for the last two years when we've been put out, so I'll sell for that any time. Yes, the smile tells it all. Well done for David Dodds. Well, we gave you the details briefly of Aberdeen's sensational victory tonight at Pataudry. Let's hear now from Frank Gilfeather of Grampian Television at the ground. 